So let's do this because um, I have a ton of notes here that I've taken as far as different subjects that I want to broach and this money conversations and different things that we talking about, whether it be finances, enhancing your portfolio. And I did commit to speaking about this at least once a week at the end of the week. And then we'll evaluate it week to week as far as what the responses are or what the interest level is. But um, I did drop several videos and I get a lot of feedback and comments. As a matter of fact, one of the videos that I dropped on my regular channel, the Anton Daniels channel, make sure you guys have subscribed to that. But one of the, the videos that I dropped on there, what I learned about opening my own restaurant after one year has recently went past 100,000 views, which is absolutely dope, right? And so I think that one of the things that I'm thinking about doing is doing a live stream in which not only could I drop a video at least once a week that's specifically dedicated to talking about finances and resources and how to make more money and, you know, increase your net worth and all of these other type of things. But I'm thinking about doing a live stream at least once a week where we talk about whatever you guys want to talk about and you tune in and you tell me what you want me to go into depth about. And that's what I'll do. But today I'll I'll give you an in-depth look about the restaurant business. And I think it's a hot topic because here in Michigan, over 3000 restaurants is closed as a result of the pandemic. I was fortunate enough to be profitable in the business, have significant tax write offs as a result of investing in the business and then exiting the business at the perfect time. And I think that's just God, right? It's God and it's really continuing to do a self-assessment of where it is that I, at, where I was at in my life at the time and what I wanted my lifestyle to look like, right? But um, I got out in November, 2019, the perfect time. And everything was absolutely phenomenal. Got out at the right time. I'm not sure how the people that um, I sold my location to is doing, but apparently they're still there. But just to give you guys an in-depth look into the restaurant business, because it doesn't really matter. I've learned whether or not there's a pandemic or if people are really like doing bad in the restaurant business or what state you in. There's always going to be a huge interest from other people that's not in the business about how they can get into the business or how they can open their own restaurant or should I sell dinners first and all that other type of stuff. So let's just do a deep dive into my personal experience in the restaurant business real quick. So my curiosity came. OK, the reason why I opened up a restaurant or I even went into a restaurant or the restaurant business is for three reasons. Number one, I was looking to get rid of some money as far as understanding what my tax burden was going to be for that specific year or for the next couple years. And I had to figure out, OK, what do I want to invest in? Right. That I am curious about, because at the time, you know, my father was alive and he had always had this dream and opened up his own restaurant because he had did it with my with his brother before my uncle on, on his side and that business relationship soured because he just invested the money. He was like a silent investor and the dude ran a business and so on, whatever. Right. But he had always had this dream. And so I'm like, OK, I got some money that I need to get rid of. How do I invest it to where I can lower my tax burden and then actually build something that's going to fulfill not only his dream, but possibly become a resource for me in the future. Right tax purposes, investing in family. Second reason was I wanted to show some guys that I was mentoring and I still mentor a ton of them to this day. I was giving them some insight into how you can do things and how you can work your way up and how you can get some, you know, really see real life examples of people that's building businesses and doing things a certain type of way. Right. And you don't have to be a basketball player. Basketball players don't necessarily have a lot of insight into understanding from businesses and, you know, rappers and all these other type of things. You don't have to sell dope. You don't have to do all of these different things that's usually champion in our culture and our society to be successful in certain business areas. So let me show you how to do it. That's number two. Number three, I wanted to document the journey and give insight on YouTube. So several videos, I have more. I'm actually, I need to move it into the restaurant business playlist, but um, several videos have given people the game and insight into how I did it, taking you along the journey. So if you go to the Anton Daniels channel, 
Um, again, I'll add some stuff into this by the time you look at it to where you can see that playlist. But I went into several different things. The why I decided to close and get out of the restaurant business, five reasons why prime location isn't that important. Um, what I learned from owning my own restaurant after one, uh, after one year, five reasons why your restaurant will fail. All of these different things that's actually giving you the blueprint or the champ uh, trampoline to leapfrog into this business. So one thing that I will give you right away is that um, it didn't take me long. I didn't have to build this big business plan. And I know that there are several different ways in which you can do it, but I made a lot of mistakes along the way, just things that I wouldn't have never been able to avoid no matter what, simply because I just didn't know what I didn't know. Right. I wasn't a restaurant owner. Um, as much research as I did, I even went to several people in my family that did it for an extended period of time and they gave me the game and their blessing, but still they, you know, doing it from scratch, building it out from scratch. Being there to see every intricate detail was an education in itself. You would prefer to find a location where you're grandfathered in for the, from the permit process, right? So what that means is that I did a whole build out. My total cost exceeded over $100,000 because I did everything new. I did everything custom. I only had a few things that I bought used, which was like a couple um, refrigerators and a sink or something like that. But everything I brought in to do custom. I decided to do a carry out little sit in areas, but not totally a dining area. And I wanted to do carry out with the option of expanding later, which I did acquire the place next door to me. Um, and I had acquired that on one of my birthdays or something like that. But I wanted to do a carry out first to kind of vet the business, see how it is that I wanted to plan out and get the doors open and start making money prior to expanding to a dining area. I even still got the blueprints that I paid my architect to, you know, do and get the permitting process for the whole dining area, right? Um, but you'll save a significant amount of money. I would say at least 75% of your budget that you would that you would allocate towards doing a complete new build out if you were to find a location. And this is the perfect time to find a location because it's a ton of restaurants that's already closed, right? If you were to find a location and then get grandfather, grandfathered into the specifications in order to meet criteria for that specific city as it relates to the permitting process, your hood, ventilation system, um, everything that's on the roof as far as bringing out, you know, taking out the bad air and bringing in new air and all of this other type of stuff. You can circumvent a lot of those issues or a lot of that time frame and money that you would spend doing a completely new build out the electrical all of that stuff will be grandfathered in so one tip right away without going too much into detail try to find a location that has all is already set up for a restaurant and all like a, a restaurant that's recently closed see how you can maybe change the menu and all of this other type of stuff the concept do your own thing with that you'll be gold second thing is is you have to you have to control your the costs. So one of the reasons why I had made a video about why a prime location isn't as important today is because the more prime the location is, obviously the higher your rent is going to be. And so that is going to be a fixed cost. If you can control your fixed costs, you can make adjustments on everything else. You can make adjustments on you know, how often you bring in certain food and you can negotiate with certain vendors. When I first started off, I was getting all of my food from downtown Detroit, Eastern Market District, for those of you that are familiar. And I would have to make the trek. And then I found out one of my vendors was overcharging me for a lot of different stuff and the price that they was paying. But the quality wasn't as good as a place that I found that was literally seven minutes away from my restaurant that wound up delivering, which ultimately saved me time, right? You can negotiate and figure out all of the variable costs that go along with it. But the thing about it is, again, is that you want to control your fixed costs. You want to try to control how much you're paying for rent. You want to try to control um, how much you're paying as far as another cost is going to be employees. How do you navigate that? You don't want to start off your business by hiring family. You want to figure out how much you can pay yourself. That has to factor into your fixed costs. Um, another thing that I think is important is that you got to figure out your margins very early. 
A lot of people overestimate how much they can make because they're only looking at the gross and they're not looking at the net. The net is what you have after you pay everything out, after you pay your employees. How much does it cost you to sell a chicken dinner with two sides, right? The cost is not based off of how much your food cost is. You have to factor in how many dinners you sell each month, right? And then take into consideration how much you're paying in payroll, because that, that factors in, that has to be divided into it. How much you're paying in utility costs, how much you're paying in rent. That'll tell you how much you're paying per dinner to make it. And then you take away from that, from how much you're selling it for. And that includes um, the styrofoam containers, the, the forks and spoons, all of these different things that go into the cost of selling each dinner. I used analytics in order to evaluate exactly how much I was going to sell of what thing at what specific time. You also are going to have to take into consideration that you got to be there. That's the biggest thing. A lot of people think that restaurants and a lot of these businesses run themselves. Unless you're managing a real estate portfolio, unless you're managing a stock portfolio, which both of those things I do now. Anything outside of that, you're going to have to be there for an extended period of time, especially in the beginning, in order to ensure that it's successful. Otherwise, people will steal you blind. They won't work as hard. They won't do what it is that they're supposed to do. And I know that I'm kind of talking fast in this thing. But again, giving you these condensed videos with so much information, it's hard to really figure out what you need because I'm only doing this once or twice a week. It's hard to figure out how to give you the best information at the right time in order for you to be successful, right? Mm -hmm. Taxes, payroll taxes, that is a huge thing. Paying that 6% sales tax for every single thing that you sell, that is a huge thing. One of the things that really benefited me was the tax benefits and that I didn't need the money, right? I wasn't basing my survival on a day-to-day -day basis, my living expenses and all of that other type of stuff off of what the restaurant was doing. I didn't care about that money. That was money that I was going into that specific business in order to grow it. My goal was to grow it, not necessarily live off of it, right? So again, there are so many different factors that go into um, building out a restaurant. Right now, a lot of restaurants are going out of business because they couldn't anticipate the possibility of being shut down for an extended period of time. I think that one other thing that I want to mention before we get off today is these delivery services. I had came up with this great concept way before it's popularized today when all of these food delivery services, the DoorDashes, the Grubhubs, the Uber Eats, the Postmates, all of this stuff. Um, I was I had set up and one of the ways I was successful, again, that I was able to grow sales was to utilize my kitchen to not only sell to food trucks, because here in Michigan, they have to have a commissary that they go back to, to do all of the things that they need to do in order to meet the expectations for the state as far as the licensing and the permitting process for a food truck. I sold um, availability in that, but I also created ghost kitchens. Ghost kitchens are basically you creating another business, right? A completely separate restaurant that you're basically utilizing your same employees, your same ingredients, creating a completely new restaurant or concept or food palette, and you're selling that same product, or you're selling a different product out of the same kitchen with a new name. So you're creating a whole nother business that only exists virtually. Nobody can come in and buy from that specific business. Let's say I was a soul food restaurant, right? But then I, I had the grill space, I had all of that. I wanted to create a burger joint or a fry joint or whatever this thing is. I was able to whip up that concept, do the new pictures, have everything coming out of the same kitchen and still have the same employees, the same cost associated with this business, except for you're selling more product at a cheaper price because you don't have to do all of the different marketing materials and all of this different stuff as it relates to having a second restaurant that you're only doing delivery out of. That's one of the reasons or one of the ways in which you can supplement or continue to build on top of that specific business. But one thing that you want to keep in mind is everything that you're doing on these platforms is negotiable because a lot of people are paying astronomical fees for doing business on that on that platform. They're, these, these platforms, the Uber Eats, the, Dub, the Grubhub, the DoorDashes, they're taking a cut of every single thing that you sell 
and they're charging the the delivery the delivery person or whoever orders it they're charging them a fee to have it delivered so you can negotiate that price based off of the volume that you're doing again just another idea and i know that this problem this video probably is going a lot longer than all of the other videos but i'm thinking that we need to do a live stream so that we can talk more extensively about a lot of this business stuff because it is a lot of information that I have and I don't charge anybody for this information. I just give it away and I pour it into people for free. And I think that it would add a lot of value or, or at least give you some insight into what you need to be doing differently if you do, do decide to go down a lot of these paths like opening up a restaurant.